So in this video, I want to talk about being um, good at pulling people into conversations, uh, especially strangers. And yes, this can apply to beautiful women. But before I get into that, I want to suggest the idea that if you're not a good conversationalist with strangers, you can't pull them into a conversation where they they really want to get to know you or they're curious about you or they, they just feel seen by you then uh, maybe you should start with that first. But before I do, I want to um, let you know I'm in a different location than normal. Uh, I'm in a hotel. I'm in Flims, uh, Switzerland. I'm taking a ski camp here. And, then you know, you know, the new company, True Courage and Fearless, is all about stepping into tension, having fun, learning to live a passionate life where you get up every day loving the tension and loving life. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking a five-day ski camp, having a blast, learning to jump. I hit the biggest jumps at the end of the day that I've ever hit in my life three days in. Um, man, I was getting some air and, uh, that's, uh, uh, it was pretty wild. I had a great time and I'll be bringing a video together of this whole, of this trip. And you'll get to see me, uh, progressing as I'm learning to jump higher and higher and, and doing some other stuff on skis that I've always wanted to do. I love skiing. It's, it's one of my passions. That's why I live by a ski resort. So can't wait to share that with all of you and talk a little bit more about how I, use the courage principles to get better that week to grow that week to step into this into to step into the fear and, and really turn it into excitement and courage now with that said let's dive into this topic that i brought up today how do you become a good conversationalist and i was thinking about it like i was out talking to different people this week and i was at uh at a restaurant and I'm, I'm joking with this girl and i'm joking with that girl and i'm flirting and i'm playing and i'm not really trying to get anything anywhere. I got, I'm skiing all week. That's all my mind's on, but I'm having fun connecting with strangers and it feels so good. For those of you that have done the heart walk and the vulnerability walk, this is a, uh, this feels really good because when you do the vulnerability walk or the vulnerability talks, you let people in at a deep level and it really kind of feeds your body. I think humans are meant to connect socially. We know we are, we're social creatures by nature. And the more you let other people in and get and make them feel seen by you and connected to you in a sense, even if it's just for a moment, the happier you become. And when you meet that special, beautiful woman, that amazing woman that you really care about, it, it you already have this charge from for making so many people smile and connecting with so many people that it kind of opens her up easier. And it also gets you in the mood to talk it gets you in the in the in the conversational flow and so if you don't do this on a regular basis or if you're not good at it then you expect to be super chatty and connected with a beautiful woman that you're interested in then this is going to be a problem so let's talk about a simple process to develop this so this is going to be a five-step process okay and just five things i want to cover in this video and really as you get good at this it'll all become natural and you won't even think about these steps but number one you have to be actually interested in having conversations with strangers some of you will just do it because i told you to you'll do it because you have to you'll do it because you need to to get good so you can get a beautiful woman and you're not actually interested in other human beings and this is where the heart walks and the vulnerability walks are so powerful as you start actually connecting with the human beings you'll be interested in in connecting with them because it makes you feel so good so getting genuinely interested in people is an important skill set in this area you know women notice how you treat other people too when you're out on a date and the way you talk to the barista the way you talk to the waiter it all is calculated in she sees it she sees does this guy have a good heart is he has a generous heart and that doesn't even, that doesn't even have to mean money are you connected to other people? Do other people like to connect to you? Whether it's a, a you know an older waiter that's that's you know struggling to get by, or the, the barista. Maybe the barista is kind of cute, and you you're just being you. You're connecty. You're not overly flirting, but because you're connected and letting her in, the woman you're on a date with notices that, and that makes her more attractive. That's very common, by the way. So being genuinely interested in strangers, cultivate this, go out and ask questions to yourself, just bring a notebook with you and just sit down and look at people and say, what would I be genuinely interested in asking that person right there? And what would I be genuinely interested in asking that person over there? And look inside yourself and see if you can find that point where you actually get interested in something. And then see if you can expand on it more and more and more. Because people notice the difference in your subcommunication when you're genuinely interested or not. So um, develop that genuine interest. Just sit there and practice. Find, 
five or six things you'd love to ask people that are in the coffee shop that you're at today or some other place with random strangers you'd be curious about. And every day, if you do that, it'll naturally build on itself. It'll grow. And pretty soon you'll have this endless repertoire of questions. Like some of my favorite people to talk to are people that are super curious. And they're like, well, tell me more about that. Really? Why do you think that is? And they're just really interested in other people. That's why they're so good at asking questions. And it just pulls you right open. You might even think about people like that in your life that you've met and how how they can get you to want to talk and talk and talk. So being genuinely interested in strangers, that's number one. Number two, let go of outcome. You got to be completely free of outcome. That's what letting all women go is about. The whole series of videos I did on that. It's such a powerful series. It's been watched. Uh, it's done really well for our channel. So letting go of outcome. You can't be attached to whether these people like you or don't like you. That's that's true with beautiful women. That's true with talking to people in general. That's true with being a good conversationalist. You have to do you. And if you're worried about whether people like you or don't like you, you need them to like you to feel good about yourself, then you got to do the work on that. So look at my video, letting all women go um, or letting all women go in practice to uh, learn more about that. Number three, and I already kind of covered this one at number one, be genuinely interested in the other person. So we're going to call this a, an extension of number one. And you got to practice this. I said this in number one, but the next part is you've got to be unattached to outcome in what they say to you too. So when she gives you an answer to a question, if she doesn't seem super excited or he, whoever you're talking to, it could be a beautiful woman, right? Could be anybody. Um, then you've got to learn to let go of the attachment to the outcome. If they're busy and they're kind of blowing you off, let it go. If your question land, kind of lands, maybe you ask another one. And you start to pull them in and they get curious. Next thing you know, they start talking sometimes. Sometimes they don't. And as you get better and better, be genuinely interested and being unattached to outcome, you're going to notice more and more people getting pulled in and wanting to talk to you. So particularly when you ask questions, make statements, or even tell a story, you've got to let go of worrying about what the other person thinks. That doesn't mean you don't adjust to their subcommunication, adjust to their the way they feel. You may be, oh, she really doesn't want to talk. I've said, asked three questions. She's She really wants to move on. Or or wow, this person's, I can't get them to stop talking. They're coming at me at hundred miles an hour. Now I want to move on. So you might want to really practice taking that person in for a minute, grounding them out and then move on. So letting go of the attachment outcome, not making things right or wrong. Number four, ask them questions at a rate of about two questions to one share. It's really simple. You ask a couple questions then you share something that relates to the topic of what you're talking about that has emotion in it and feeling in it. And, uh, and if you stick to this formula, at least in the beginning, you're going to do a lot better. And then with time, you can start to adjust this formula. You can start, you might find that somebody really is a curious person and you can learn from them. They're pulling you out and maybe they've reversed that number on you. It'll be really interesting if you notice that, um, you, you might find all kinds of things that happen in this area, but in the beginning, stick to, uh, asking them basically two questions to one share. Uh, it's really simple. And that's number four. Number five, when you get good at this, you can create tension with banter and teasing, start to become playful. You know, they share a couple things and then you might tease them a little bit and then you might share and then you might, and then they might tease you back. And then a moment later you go back into the share and, and you're sharing back and forth. So I highly recommend you get good with tension. If you're not good with tension, you don't need it in the beginning. But in time, I want you to get good with banter and tension. And I have some great videos on helping you to cultivate banter and tension. We'll put that on the screen here too. This is a simple video. There's not a lot to it. I just want you to have something simple to go out and practice your conversational skills, connecting with others. I've been doing this all during my trip everywhere. I've been going and having a blast. I've made a lot of friends, really cool people. These basic principles, I was kind of thinking about them. It's all about being present. It's all about being embodied, as you know that. Um, it all, it's all, and so if you're having trouble in these areas, then you probably have an issue with embodiment. And, um, and that's where you need to take a deeper look at my book, uh, The Art of Fearless Seduction, or contact us and let us know that you're interested in learning more about this you can contact me at, um, at truecourage.io that's my new website and um, 
you're awesome. Um, I love that you watch the channel. I'm, this video is not as in depth as usual. It's simple. It just gives you a simple technique to practice. Uh, so I'm going to invite you to put some comments in on what you want me to make videos about in the future as we move in the direction of true courage. What, um, what do you want to learn more about? Uh, that type of stuff. Now, with that said, if you like the video, make sure to like, make sure to uh, subscribe, make sure to share, make sure to hit that bell notification. And again, make sure to comment below. Uh, we really, I really want to see those comments and I really want to see what you want to learn more about. And, uh, and I've already got a direction going, but I'm, I'm kind of adjusting it as I go. So awesome. I'll see you in the next video. And remember, only the courageous really live. Take care.